All right, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning, uh, May the 29th, uh, 2022. And uh, I'm happy that you're with us. I'm Pastor Tommy Harshley, and, and today is a good day by the help of the Lord. I um, want you to learn to, to turn with us this morning. Uh, we have a, 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 a wonderful lesson and an important lesson uh, with respect to being born again. And the final one in this series that we're dealing with, the final lesson, in fact, of this quarter. Uh, we're getting ready to go into the summer quarter. But let's begin with prayer, and from there, we will dig right into the scripture. Lord, we thank you today for the privilege of your word. We thank you that you've given us the opportunity uh, to receive your word, to hear, and to take it in. I pray that our, our spiritual our, our eyes and spiritual ears will be open, uh, that we will receive it in full measure, and that we'll be hearers and we will be doers of your word. I pray that you would convict someone today. And, and change, that there will be a change in their life. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name, and we say amen and amen. Amen. Today's lesson is entitled, The Power of the Holy Ghost. The Power of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I say this, that uh, if you read the King James, uh, it, we, we, the term is often used as the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's, that's, that's King James language of 1611. Uh, that's, that's how they spoke, but you can also say the Holy Spirit. No just difference at all, just a modern verse for that Greek word, pneuma. So, uh, the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is, uh, is our lesson for this morning. The focus verse is from Ephesians uh, chapter 5 and verse 18. Ephesians 5 and 18. We just got through teaching through the book of Ephesians some few months recently. Uh, marvelous, marvelous book. If you haven't read through it, I encourage you to do so. But Ephesians 5 and 18 says this, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, but be filled with the Spirit and so here, the lesson is speaking of the Holy Spirit. The lesson, the big idea is this. I will live my life under the influence, thank you, Jesus, of the Holy Ghost. I'll live my life under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And the truth about God, God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. He absolutely, absolutely is doing that. Upon all flesh, red, yellow, black, and white, all the precious insight, all are, are being filled with the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. The lesson, big idea, that this is a part of that that captures my eye thinking uh, the, just the, 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 the term and the phraseology that is used there. It says, I will live my life under the influence. Now, if I just stop right there, um, if, I just wonder if any of us have heard that term, under the influence. And if you, if you may, perhaps, maybe my mind is not right, but uh, the, the first thing that, that comes to my mind when I think about someone being under the influence is someone being under the influence of, al of alcohol, of basically them being, being drunk, under the influence. We recognize that if a person is under the influence of of alcohol, or it could be something else, but uh, under the influence that their life and what they do and how they think has been modified because they're under the influence that there's been some removing of themselves and in the place of that, that alcohol or whatever other else that, that, that they've allowed to take that place in their life is controlling them. This is, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a negative way in terms of being under the influence. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit if we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a positive outcome. Yes, those who are led by the Spirit of God under this, under the influence, the scriptures, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Those that are, be, their lives are directed uh, by He, the Holy Spirit, uh, that they're going to be in a place of true relationship with God and in a place of favor with the Lord as well. All right, so t today we're talking about the power of the Holy, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, begin with um, a prophecy in, in the book of Joel, so one of the uh, Old Testament prophets, so-called minor, not minor in importance, but minor in just the length of his uh, of his writing. And um, in the in the in the book of Joel, he he makes a prophecy that in the last days, in Joel chapter two, you can read it. He says that in the last days that that God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, that, that all flesh is going to be influenced. He says, your sons and your daughter, your old men, your young women, your maid upon your handmaids. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon everybody in the last days. How marvelous that is. God says, I'm going to pour out of my own spirit, and human beings are going to be the beneficiaries of the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. And so that's a prophecy that, that Joel says is going to happen. 
We, we pick up on, on the day of Pentecost, Peter's preaching. In fact, let's, let's turn back there. Let's turn to the book of Acts and, uh, and see something that is, is really, really powerful. In Acts ch ch chapter 2, uh, we, we know the story the, that the Holy Spirit was poured out and, um, and they begin to speak in other tongues, that speak in other languages, that there appeared unto them like cloven tongues or divided tongues of fire upon each of them. That's God dedicating the, 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 the new temple, which is us, our bodies. And, uh, and, and everyone creates a commotion, a, a pandemonium, a just a commotion just un, unheard of, unheralded in, in, in Jerusalem. And, and people are wondering, what is going on? What is going on? This, in, in, in when all that happened, then the Lord used Brother Peter, that same, that same fellow that he seemed to, to have trouble and, and to do, say things, to get out of God's will, but now he's been filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 14, the scripture says this, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Listen to me, he says. These are not drunken as you suppose. Seeing it's but the, the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning. But verse 16 says this. says what? But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So now he's telling to all the Jewish brethren what Joel has prophesied now it has come to pass. This teaching, I'm certain, I would believe that this is teaching that Jesus had given the disciples. Nonetheless, Peter uh, says this is what, this is a prophecy that has been fulfilled. All right. Shekinah, he goes on and quotes uh, the prophecy of Joel. Verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And he goes on, your sons and your daughters, and all will be. So uh, we have the prophecy of the Holy Spirit. And then on the day of Pentecost, it becomes a reality. And um, we had uh, the disciples, as we read here in Acts chapter 2, we, didn't, we jumped over that a little bit, but uh, that, that, that they were to wait. After the Lord was ascended back into heaven, he told them to go into Jerusalem and wait until you've been endued with power. Go and wait until the, the Holy Spirit comes. And they went, those 120 up in, a, up in an upper room, they waited for the Holy Spirit to come. And he did come. Hallelujah. Well, they, were, they were in one accord and with one place, in one, in one place, there was a unity in their spirit. There's a unity in their purpose. And they waited because the, the Lord has said that the Holy Spirit is going to come. And it did come. Hallelujah. It did come. So they're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And as marvelous as that is, what does that mean, though, for you and me? What does it mean for you and me? So we have Peter preaching. I said, begin. He's been talking about Joel and the prophecy, and, and that's that's marvelous. So now we have a fulfilled prophecy. But again, what does that mean for you and for me? What does it mean for us? And so he goes on. He continues to preach, and he talks about Jesus. He talks about the wickedness of those who killed the Lord. But then, in still in that same book, Acts chapter two. And uh, let's be looking at that verse. I'll, I'll begin at verse thirty-six. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Both of those things that he is saying. He is, he is the Jehovah God and he is the Messiah. Jesus whom you killed, he's that. He's that. He's all that in one person. When they heard this, verse 37, they were pricked in their hearts and said to Peter and to the rest of us, I was men and brethren, what shall we do? That's a powerful thing. As the word of God pro goes forth, and at the end of it, there should be a question for any of us. Lord, what should I do now that I've heard your word? They asked the question then. We asked 238. We read it a number of times. He says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And then verse 39. This is what's important for us. Listen to this. Acts 2 and 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hmm. You, can, you can put in parentheses if you want. Next to that verse, you can put in there parentheses, me. Put an explanation mark, me. As many as the Lord our God shall call. That's the beauty of what we have with respect to the Holy Spirit that fell on that day. That it wasn't just for those, uh, that, that 120 in the upper room, 
and, and for those later who receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's for us as well. I want to tell you that in May 29th of 2022, God still is filling people with the power of the Holy Spirit. That event that occurred on Pentecost is still happening. People are being filled, hallelujah, with the power of the Holy Spirit. I want someone to know this morning that if you have not been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can have it. You can have, I shouldn't say have it, you can have him, the Spirit of Christ dwelling on the inside. You can receive the Holy Spirit. The Lord is, is gracious and kind. He'll give the Holy Spirit to, to whoever says, I want that Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I want it. I want it. Uh, it's not in, in, in the lesson notes, but Luke, turn to, let me see here what I want to turn to book Luke chapter 11. I want to see scripture tells us something here uh, with respect to that. Thank you, Lord. Look at Luke chapter 11, and Jesus gives a parable of, uh, of, of the individual that asks and seeks and knocks. Uh, but at the end, he says this. Um, um, Luke chapter 11. And I'll, I'll begin at verse 11. The scripture says, Luke 11 and verse 11. The scripture says this. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he ask for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And so there we have a powerful statement that Jesus made himself. He says, if you want the Holy Spirit, ask him. Hallelujah. And maybe that's what someone needs to do today. Just ask him. Lord, I want the power of the Holy Spirit. I want the power that helps me to go beyond myself and to live in a way that, that I can't live by myself. That I don't have, uh, I just don't have the stick to -itiveness. I don't have the moral centeredness. I don't have the will. But I want to tell someone today that the Holy Spirit will help you and it will help me. It'll help all of us to live in ways that are beyond ourselves, that he's able to touch our thinking. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and the Holy Spirit is our guide, that he leads us and guides us into all truth. And I want to tell someone this morning as well that he, the Holy Spirit, will speak to us. Yes, he will speak. That there's a still small voice of the Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us uh, and, and helps us in this present world. Hallelujah. I want you to know, friend, that we don't have to go it alone and by ourselves. The Holy Spirit is able to help us. Hallelujah. And so if we ask him, hallelujah, if you ask him, and he says, uh, in, in, in relative to the, the, the Holy Spirit, he says, you, you shall receive power. Go back with me. We're, we're, we're reading the book of Acts already, but let's turn back there. Again, the promise uh, that Jesus made, a primary promise that he made with respect to what he, the Holy Spirit, was going to do for us in Acts chapter 1. And uh, he's talking to the disciples just before he ascends into heaven. Acts chapter 1. Uh, pick, uh, let's pick it up uh, together. Uh, verse 7. He says this, Jesus, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his power. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy, Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Verse 9 says this. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. But what I want you to focus on is verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Perhaps someone is trying to do something under the power of yourself that you, you can't stop shacking. You can't stop uh, ha having extramarital, premarital sex. You can't stop cheating. You can't stop lying. You can't stop lusting. You can't stop d d doing uh, any number of things that you just is, is drinking. And you can't stop using illicit substances and, and drugs. Uh, I want you to know, brother and sister, Lord, help me. The Holy Ghost is helping me here this morning. That it is the power of the Holy Spirit that can help you. That, that you can't stop hating or you can't forgive 
on and on, all these things that, that in our humanity uh, we just can't get beyond. But I want to declare to someone this morning, Jesus said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. This witnessing that Jesus speaks of here, it is, I believe, twofold. That it is, of course, verbal, that the Holy Spirit gives people boldness to speak, yes. In, in, this, in this same book, we'll, we'll see that to be very true. That same Peter that ran away uh, when he was asked about Jesus before he got the Holy Ghost, now with the Holy Spirit, he stands up and he boldly proclaims you got to be born again. He boldly proclaims who Jesus is. In other words, he has something that the Holy Spirit has given him they didn't have before he's bold. So it's words. Yes, the Holy Spirit will help you to speak those things that are in accordance with God's will. But the Holy Spirit will also help you to be a witness by how we live, by how we live, that we'll live in a way that's godly and that's pure and that's honest uh, and that's morally upright before God. The Holy Spirit can help us and he will help us. Hallelujah. He will help us as we go forward. And so I want you to know today, everyone listening to me today, that the Holy Spirit is not just what happened way back then, 2,000 years ago, that the Holy Spirit is something that God is doing today. And in fact, it is often said, and I believe it's true, that we actually live now in the day of the age of the Holy Spirit. This is the day that we live in. Uh, that we now have the privilege, hallelujah, of being filled with the spirit of the living God. That the Old Testament saints, uh, they didn't have what we have in terms of being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come upon them for various actions and, 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 and situations. But we who, have, uh, who are, are privileged to be here in these last days, as Joel has said, uh, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside. Bless the name of the Lord. Holy Spirit on the inside, and we now have power. Bless the name of the Lord. I wish people were here. Let's say power. Just power. I say I have power. Power of the Holy Spirit. I want someone today to recognize that you can be filled, that you can be filled today. I feel this. You can be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit today. This is what is necessary, Pastor Arthur. Repent. Lord, I'm wrong and I'm sorry. I want to do right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he's Savior. Jesus was not just a good man and a, a teacher and a moral example and, and those things. Jesus is the Son of God. You've got to confess him as Lord. Come, um, and the scriptures taught us already to be baptized in the name of Jesus, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want someone to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want you to receive the Holy Spirit today. I want someone to receive the Holy Spirit this week, this month, this year. I want you to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to wait and you don't have to try to figure it out all by yourself. You, can, you don't have to try to figure it out. You walk, we walk by faith. God said, if you ask, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. And God is faithful. He teaches us in another place that he's not a respecter of persons, right? He, he, that, that, that any individual that his spirit convicts to say, come to me, he'll fill you. Yes, he will. He'll fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can live under the influence, I like that, I really like that, the key verse, uh, the lesson thought again, live under the influence. I may need to teach that, preach that as a sermon title, under the influence, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He will help me. I want to tell you that I've, I've been in church most of my life, and the Lord has helped me, and has fallen a lot of times, and did things that, that don't even want to think about, it. but God has helped me. But I want you to know this, that God will speak to you in the power of his spirit. He'll speak to you. That voice will say, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't go there. Or do this. And, and, and prompt you to, to think this way or to act this way. He'll guide you. And he'll comfort you that in the midst of difficult days, when it seems like no one knows and no one cares, that you have the comforter on the inside power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in Hebrews of our, of our Savior, that I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Well, we know Jesus is back in heaven uh, physically. He's, that's where he's at. But he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake, uh, forsake you. How is that? It's in the power of his spirit. One other text that, that I just want to, um, to read, I felt it just led to it. Turn with me to the book of 
uh, Romans. And um, let's look at chapter 8, and uh, we'll, we'll make this our closing verse. Uh, Romans chapter 8, and here um, the writer, Paul, speaks to the Roman church, and he speaks of the uh, of being born again and, and what the Spirit does for us, helps us to live uh, in a way that is dead to sin. But look, just one verse I want to read. I won't try to exposit all that. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9 says this, Romans 8 and 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, if the Holy Spirit dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? He's none of his. you got to have that Spirit. And you can have that Spirit today. The Lord will give it to you. Just come and ask. I'm going to be praying for you. I hope you'll come even to service today. Today will be a good day to come. If you've been pricked by this word and, and, and God can feel the power of the Holy Spirit, he's saying that what he did on the day of Pentecost, he's still able to do it today and he still does it today. God can feel you. And I'll tell you something else. He can feel you so you can speak in other tongues. He's able to do supernatural things, speak in a language that you didn't learn anywhere else. But heavenly language can come out of your mouth and however God wants to do it. So I want someone to be encouraged today that God is able to help you, strengthen you, and help you, help you go on the way that he wants you to walk in. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you today for the truth of your word. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you right now that the gift of the Holy Spirit is still operating and is still real in the world we live in. I pray, Lord, today that someone by the, this, this word and the, as the word has been opened, that they will desire to have the Holy Spirit, that you'll fill them in a full way and that they'll walk in obedience to you. We ask it all in Jesus' name, and we say amen, and amen, and amen. Uh, the Lord bless you. I look forward to seeing you today. Uh, morning service is at 1030, so please come and join us at that time. Uh, we will be here in the sanctuary. Lift up the name of the Lord. The Lord has been in our midst in wonderful ways and powerful ways, so please, you need to come. Amen. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And uh, we can lift up the name of the Lord together, and we'll do it in a safe way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I believe and know that you'll be blessed. So please come, invite someone to bring, with, bring them with you. Same thing for our virtual church. If you're not able to come today, uh, continue to tune in. And of course, uh, share with someone else. Let them tune in as well. Uh, and all together, amen, we'll be blessed. The Lord bless you. We will see you shortly. Amen.